Welcome to episode six of the Momxiety Club podcast. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about little things that can make a big difference. Welcome to the Momxiety Club podcast. I'm your host, Tori Levine. And as a former mental health worker with degrees in psychology and criminal justice, I know the importance of keeping calm in difficult situations. But when I had my kids, I found myself full of anxiety. I was constantly questioning if I was doing things right or how I was messing them up now. One day, everything clicked and I made a commitment to own my anxiety so it doesn't own me. And that's why I started the Momxiety Club podcast. Each week, we'll discuss all things motherhood. So join me and let's get rid of some of this anxiety together. Hello, welcome to the Momxiety Club podcast. I am Tori Levine, and I am so thankful that you are here sharing this time with me. And today we are going to chat about little things that can make a big difference. Okay, we're going to just get right into it. If you didn't know this before, I bet you do now being a mom, but little things can make a big difference. Those little babies that came home with us can really change our world. It seems like it's the theme for me this week. It's being discussed in groups. It was discussed in the Monsiety Club membership call with one of our members. It was discussed in one of my business calls with Melina Palmer on the Brainy Business Podcast, Blend Psychology and Business. Uh, in our call, we discussed how little things can make a big difference. And that really got me thinking about how that is like the central idea behind Mom's Society Club, Mommy Bar, all those things that there are these teeny tiny little things that we can do every day that can really have a big impact on us down the line for the whole day, for the week, the month, and so on. I'm going to break down the episode into three sections based on different stages of pregnancy and postpartum. And you might notice, but a lot of what I say from one uh, stage to the next is going to be very similar. And that's for a good reason. This is a little side note, but did you know that your brain, your subconscious brain processes 99% of the information that goes into your brain? And your conscious process is only less than 1% of that. That's why there's so, such a big push for habits and routines because the more we do something, the more our brain doesn't have to consciously focus on it. So that frees up more space in our brain, especially it's good from mom brain uh, to process everything else that is going on and figuring out the logistics of life. So if you can start during pregnancy, that is great. Um, But if you're already postpartum or you've had your baby three years ago, still, it's not like you cannot start it right now. (laughs) These are things you, no matter when you start, it is great. So during pregnancy, what small physical thing can you do that will make a big impact on you down the line? Well, number one, that is what I call squeezes. It's a pelvic floor contraction and wrapping around of your transverse abdominal muscles. So if you don't know what those are and you're not driving and you're not, you know, holding a baby at the moment, take your hands and you can put them on your rib cage. Take a nice inhale, exhale out. And I want you to like feel like your rib cage is knitting together. Each bone is overlapping. You're going to take your hands down a little bit underneath your rib cage now along your waist. And you're going to inhale and you're going to exhale and you're going to pull that belly button into your spine and feel like you have a corset, like your hands are a corset wrapping around you. And really what that corset is are your transverse abdominals that are the deep inner abdominal muscles that really support your spine. So when I was pregnant, I would do this when I brushed my teeth in the morning and in the evening. I would stand there and do something called diaphragmatic breathing. That is when you would take a nice inhale, exhale, let everything out, and you squeeze everything together. 
And then when you inhale again, you can expand, exhale, pull that belly button in. And while you're doing that, you're going to concentrate on doing a pelvic floor contraction, a Kegel, as some of you may know it. And the more you do this, the better we get at engaging our core at the right times and letting it relax at the right times because there needs to be a relaxation or else your muscles get overtired and then it's like you could have super duper strong muscles but if they get overtired and they stop working you're out of luck so you have to learn how to properly relax and properly engage. Now, the fourth trimester, generally known as the first three months after having a baby, but also up to a whole year after having a baby. A little physical thing you can do, again, is going to be those squeezes and pelvic floor contractions. This diaphragmatic breathing is something you can do as soon as you have a baby because it's really just this gentle engagement of your transverse abdominal muscles. The engagement here sets the foundation for any type of exercise that you are going to be doing later on. Doing these squeezes will help with repairing any diastasis recti you have, any separation of your abdominal muscles. It helps you with back pain. A lot of back pain can come from weak core muscles and improper alignment and weak pelvic floor muscles. And there's, it's all linked together. So the more you're doing this, engaging that deep inner core and pelvic floor, even though it's so tiny, it might not feel like a workout to you. It's really helping your deep down core get strong so that you're not going to have to worry about a weak core, weak back further down the line when you're going to be chasing baby around. And if you're sitting and feeding baby for a long time or rocking baby, playing with baby on the floor, any of those things, it's really going to help you learn to subconsciously have those muscles engaged to help support your spine so that you don't have back pain because that's a problem a lot of moms come to me about when they work with me uh, one-on-one for Pilates or mommy bar. All right. And now I, this is postpartum, but you're always, once you're postpartum, you're always postpartum. So for the rest of your life will be stage three. (laughs) And this includes if you have subsequent children as well, you can always start right back over at stage one during that pregnancy. What do you think I'm going to say is our physical teeny tiny thing that you can do that's going to make a big impact? The squeezes and the diaphragmatic breathing. You're right, but I'm also going to say we're going to focus all about your alignment. I call what moms have after pregnancy mom stance, where your hips are tucked under, your shoulders are forward, and it's almost like this hunched over stance because from pregnancy, (laughs) you've been pulled that way. From holding a baby and carrying around a baby and feeding a baby, your shoulders start to hunch forward. Your neck starts to stick out. And then if you're carrying baby around a lot, you're either having one hip pushed out to the side, your pelvis tucked under, which can cause more problems for diastasis recti and separation of your abdominal muscles. And it actually makes things weaker in your core when you have your pelvis tucked under. If you've ever taken any babies at the bar, mommy bar classes, this is a key thing I talk about. And this is also like the number one lesson I give my one-on-one clients postpartum. It's about alignment. We need to stand up nice and tall, make sure our chin is neutral, that it's not jutted forward or not pulled way back in, that our shoulders are lined up over our hips, that our tailbone's not tucked under. So what I mean like tucked under is imagine like you just squeeze your tush, pull your belly button in into like a crunch position. You don't want to have that. And for some moms, actually for a lot of moms I work with, they say, no, my butt's sticking way out. And I said, nope, that is a neutral spine position that you're standing in. So it can take a little bit of time to get used to it. And then our hips should just be over top of our knees and our feet. And this is something that you want to try to concentrate on when you're holding baby in front of you and you're standing up. 
when you are changing baby's diaper. I am very guilty of doing this when I change baby's diaper. I will just hinge forward and lean my hips against the changing station. Same thing with cooking or preparing anything in the kitchen. I will lean forward and that like gets you all out of alignment. So what you want to focus on is neutral spine, pelvis untucked, and core engaged and pelvic floor engaged. So those are (laughs) the teeny tiny things that will make a big difference because then you don't have to worry about back pain um, or you have a good way to get rid of back pain because just simply engaging your core can help strengthen everything and focus all of the stress and tension away from your back into your core to do the work. And you'll have the comfort and ability to run around, chase baby little ones as they grow. Okay, some small things that will make a big difference mentally. My number one tip is to start a gratitude journal. One thing a day. It doesn't have to be, dear diary, today I ate this for lunch, today I read this, today I talked to these people. Just think of one thing that made you happy and that you're grateful for that happened during the day and write it down. It's about getting into the routine of taking a moment, thinking about your day, and writing it down. Because if you don't know this already as well, gratitude goes a long way. Something you really enjoyed because there are studies that show people who look back at their days and in a way of gratitude, in a way of appreciation, are happier. Being a new mom can be rough. You are sleep deprived, hungry, thirsty, walking around like a zombie because you don't get time for yourself. If you take a moment and say, I am thankful for this baby today, or I'm thankful that I got to eat on my own for five minutes today. Those little things, remembering those little things can really have a big impact on your mindset and your brain, right? I asked some listeners about some little things they do that make a big difference. And I got some responses. So these are not physical. These are just some other ideas as a mom that helps them in their daily life. Jessica wrote in and said, I put my little guy in the carrier when I vacuum. He thinks it's so fun and I get to check something off my to-do list and I don't have to worry about what he's getting into while I sleep. Plus, it's quite a workout. And that is, I I do love using the carrier because that that helps you engage that core. A lot of moms wrote in about meal prep as their small things that make a big difference in the end. And this is a great one from Tiffany, which I really want to start trying for myself, is that she picks out her kids' outfits for the week on Sunday. I love this one from Angela. She said, Roomba is a life changer. (laughs) I also put on music and light a candle when I shower. And just that 15 minutes helps me, helps center me. I also wake up at 4 a.m. to exercise and watch my trash TV before the kids wake up. But that's one is definitely not for everyone. (laughs) That is great. Yes, I am not one of those people who will wake up at 4 a.m., but I do know many people who will. I, on the other hand, watch my trash TV way too late into the night, so that's why I can't wake up at 4 (laughs) a.m. This is a great one from Leanne. She says, just spend some fun time with my girls, not worrying about house chores or to-do lists. I color or just hang out and talk to them. It cuts back on them fighting and attention-seeking. So again, sometimes that quality time, those small little bits of quality time are better than the quantity and they can go a long way in the end. So I hope you found this quick tips of little things that you can do throughout your day to make a big difference helpful. 
If you have any that you would like to share, I'd be happy to share them on our next episode. So write in at hello at momxietyclub.com and tell us what your little things that make a big difference are. And if you would like a download of some of these exercises that are great to do during pregnancy and postpartum, head to momxietyclub.com and sign up for our special email list so you get notified of the latest episodes as well as all the freebies that I like to give away. Would you like to help a new mom out? Here's a little thing that could really make a big difference. If you want to help out a new mom, please Go into where you listen to your podcasts and rate and review the Mom Anxiety Club podcast. Ratings and reviews really help all the special podcast place algorithms in showing that this is something that people like to listen to. And then it puts it out in front of more moms. It helps them find it. So the little thing of writing a little review can make a big difference in helping another new mom out. All right. Well, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and follow the Momsiety Club on social media. That's at at Momsiety Club. And please rate and review. I love to give shout outs to listeners who have written in to me or written reviews just as a big thank you. Are you searching for a community, a place to find both emotional and physical support for the stress, anxiety, and overwhelm that comes along with motherhood? and also a place to share all the fun milestones that your little one is hitting, join the Momsiety Club membership. Head to momsietyclub.com for more information. All right, well, thank you for listening. And let's go get rid of some of this momsiety together. The Momsiety Club podcast is not intended to take the place of medical advice or therapy. If you are in crisis, call your local emergency number or 911 or the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK.